Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. Hey everyone, B1B Flyer here. I'm going to show you the best way I know to easily jewel small weapon barrels. And I mean by that the small lasers and the medium lasers mostly, since there's such a small area to work with, it's really difficult to try and blend in those. Some of those openings are a millimeter or even smaller. Here's an example of what I'll be trying to demonstrate today, the several medium lasers on this Victor that I painted not too long ago. It's a relatively simple process, and I'll try to explain the theory behind it. You will need a few things for this, especially if you want to try to take it to a little bit higher level, but I'll show you the easiest way to get a basic jeweling effect and then take it a little bit further with some gloss as well as a bit of an extra highlight. Here's several paints that I like to use in combination when I'm doing this. For today I'll be using the greens, so game color, dark green, and Vallejo Game Air Scorpion Green. If you want to see me use the purple or the blue in another area, I've shown that in the PPC and Weapon Glow Effects, which will have a link at the end of this video. Additionally, you'll want to have black, white, and if you want to do the extra steps, a gloss varnish. I like to use Citadel's Art Coat, but a gloss varnish that you have handy should work just fine. For brushes, I like to use Monument Hobbies double zero Kalinsky brush, but a synthetic will work, or a size zero, even a size one. As long as it's got a nice sharp point, that's all we really need for this. You're not doing a lot of painting with it, but you wanna have real good control for that small opening to put the paint. I wanna take a few moments to talk about the light theory behind why this works. Looking at this diagram, this is the barrel if we're looking straight down the barrel right, right from the front of the miniature. The light source is going to be coming from the top almost always unless you're doing something completely different, in which case this probably won't help you out. The idea is that we're going to use the natural shadow of the short or shallow concave area of the barrel by using black and then putting our base color, which will then go over the black and merge somewhat. And then when we go to our hi highlight or bright color, we'll put it in the about 7 o'clock to 3 o'clock position. This is not exact, it doesn't have to be perfect. I will say that I'm right-handed, so my brush stroke will naturally go this way. If you're left-handed, you could easily adjust this to work to the opposite side, or however you want to have the light coming down. And then finally, the extra step that you may or may not decide you want to do is to put a small spot of white between about 5 and 6 o'clock on the position here, and obviously if you're working on the other side, it would be over here. And what that'll do is you'll get a natural shadow, you'll have a darker color, a lighter color, and then a very bright color, and because these are sharp, harsh color transitions, but on such a small scale and from far away, your eye will be tricked and it will look like there's a blend on the miniature. Then to add the highest level that we can get with this type of technique would be to add a gloss varnish into the entire area and then the natural light in the room or on your desk or wherever will bring a the brightest color, which is what a real lens would do. So. That's how we're going to mimic and fake getting this done with the least amount of steps and difficulty. Here's the miniature I'll be working on. It's essentially finished. This would be one of the last steps that you would do. I've already varnished the miniature. I've actually glossed the cockpits here and I've done a few other things at the end of the, or the painting process. So you can do this whenever you want, but if you have any washes or dry brushing you want to do, you probably want to do those before you apply this technique. So I'm going to be working on these three medium laser barrels that I've already got black paint in. I've got my dark green. I've thinned it slightly with some water. It's not glazed thin or anything like that. All I'm doing is loading my brush and I'm going to put a dot of paint and let it just sink into the recess of each barrel. That's it. That's all I have to do. All you have, This is why you just need a good tip on your brush. You just need to be able to aim and fire off this paint into the recessed area of the barrel that you're painting. You do need to let it dry completely. We're not doing any blending with this. You just want to get the base color green and what will happen is when we turn the miniature upright what will happen is the highest points won't be visible so you're going to get some natural benefit from the concave nature of the barrels. Let this dry completely and we'll go to the second color. 
With the paint dried, it should have muted out quite a bit, especially over black. Just make sure that you've got some uniform color in all the areas that you're working on. If you need to do a second coat or touch up here or there, go ahead and do that. If you're not happy with the result, just reset, go to black, and then start this process over. I've got my bright scorpion green on the palette. This is a game air color, so I actually didn't add any water to it. And I'm also gonna make sure I don't overload my brush. If you're using a larger brush, definitely make sure you don't have too much paint loaded because you don't want it to just slosh into the opening on the barrel here. We're looking for control. I'm gonna actually position the miniature, this is where I was talking about being right-handed, and aim for that five to six o'clock. And I'm basically just gonna to try to put the tip of the brush right into the center of the barrel and bring it out in one spot. You don't need to try to blend or fade, you just want to put a touch of color. I like to do a little bit off center, but again, you can do it any way you wish. And let those dry and see if they're all uniform. I like to have them at least look fairly similar. I know there could be some variations in light, but let that dry and take a look. If you need to do a second coat, because again, depending on the color you're working with, some pigments may or may not be stronger, you might want to come back and do it again. But again, try not to put too much paint on the brush because you don't want it to just pool into the opening like our first layer did. I've zoomed in a bit just to try and show you as much detail as possible. And you can see here that after the layers have dried, I've got a really good result using just two colors. If you wanted to stop here and call it a day, this would look fine. I'm gonna show you how to take it a little further using white and then take it one more step using gloss. I've taken some of my white paint and it's really thick so I needed to thin it out quite a bit with some water. Got some sage advice not too long ago. What was it, Tex? Thin your paints, weirdo. Right, anyway, you need to be careful with this because you don't want too much white going anywhere other than the spot that you put it. And now again, I'm aiming for just that ever so slight edge right between where the clock positions that I showed earlier would have been. You don't have to use pure white. If Depending on the colors that you're using, you may just want to put a little bit of your bright color in with the white and go that route. Or perhaps it's just too bright for you and you don't like that. That's also fine. You'll still get a good result. You're just building up that light on that lower area so that the eye gets tricked when it sees the colors. Again, if you don't want to continue or you don't like using gloss, you could stop there and you'll have a great effect and it'll look good on the table. I've got my art coat here, which is a gloss varnish, acrylic, water-based, and I'm going to load the tip of my brush, and here I'm actually trying to fill each recess. In the previous steps, all you were waiting for was the paint layer to dry. With this, it's going to be more time consuming because we're going to do more than one layer, because essentially we're making a lens out of the dried gloss material. So I've put it in each of the recesses and I need to let it dry completely. It's going to take a while. If you get a little over eager and you try to add too much too quickly, it'll interact and it'll get gummy and it will not turn out as well as you'd like. It will dimple in the middle because it's going to dry a little bit unevenly, especially as you start to build up those layers. But bear with me, at least three, sometimes four or more coats is what I've had to do in the past. It'll look really good as you start to get those almost a dome shape, which is the opposite of the recessed area we're working with. You don't have to take it that far, but you can really get a good result. So the benefit of having to wait for each layer to dry is that you can take a look and if you're happy with it, stop. Don't go any further than you want to. But if you're willing to take a chance and see how far you can take it or you wanna try something a little bit different, see how many layers you can do on there and maybe you'll enjoy that technique a little bit more than you thought you would. I'm all finished here. Tex, take us out of here. We certainly hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and leave your questions or comments below. Follow us on Facebook at Battletech Camo Specs Online. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. Shutdown sequence initiated.